I slept in the woods with the guys. Get out the way when they come. I caught the whole crew with his eyes. Off of the perk in the Xanakin, yeah. Walk in the sky like a mannequin, yeah. Double G on me like mannequin, yeah. Good afternoon, Jets Nation. Welcome to the Jets Duo Show. I'm your host, Drew Jets, joined by my co-host, Italy Jet, and a very special guest, Kyle from Sports Talk with Dad. Some of you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Kyle, go ahead and introduce yourself. Let the people know who you are, where you're coming from. Hey, everybody. Sports Talk with Dad. My name is Kyle. It's uh, it's a show that my dad and I started 18 months ago uh, and, and has been quite the journey. You know, we talk sports. As you can see, I am all over the place when it comes to sports. Ohio State, Chicago. Green Bay, you name it. I, I am. A, I'm a big fan. So we are, we are all over the place. So anybody listening, come and check us out. We have our own YouTube channel, Sports Talk with Dad. Awesome, man. Oh, I'm Italy Jet. I'm all over the place with soccer and football content with Jets, West Ham and Toronto FC. Me and Jude have a couple shows. And hey, man, it's going awesome for you to be on the show, Kyle. I appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me on. All righty, so. We all know the <laughs> big storyline going on this off season. Kyle's sick of hearing about it. I'm a little sick of talking about it as well. Maybe. This whole Aaron Rodgers situation. It feels like every day um hearing something new about Aaron Rodgers, saying something new about Aaron Rodgers. And as a Jets fan, as a Packers fan, in the year 2023, when are we not talking about Aaron Rodgers? It's just this insane thing, you know, everyone thinking different about the whole situation. Um, but Kyle, I got to ask you, man, you know, the big hold up for this situation, or I should say the whole, you know, trade hold up and whatnot is of course been compensation. Um, so as a Packers fan, cause you know, us Jets fans, we have, you know, what we want to get in return for Aaron Rodgers. but as a Packers fan, what did you expect the Packers to get in return for Rodgers and what the rumored, you know, trade outline has been, you know, with the two second round picks and, you know, the potential for one to become a first, depending on how the Jets do with Rodgers. What are your whole thoughts on that? And com- what does that compare to what you thought the Jets could get or the Packers could get in return for Rodgers? I mean, considering the Packers front office is filled with morons, I expect <laughs> us to get a third round pick. So... I mean, we, we went through this with Favre and literally did get a third round pick from the Jets. Obviously a different story, right? Favre had retired and then decided to come back on family night in Green Bay and say he's unretired. Played the Packers pretty dirty. This is a different ball game, right? Because you, you have Aaron Rodgers, a Hall of Fame quarterback that wants to finish his career in Green Bay. Made it clear that he wanted to stay and play and win a Super Bowl with the Green Bay Packers. And our front office... Instead of keeping a Hall of Fame wide receiver in Devontae Adams, they let him walk. And now in the next year, we're letting our Hall of Fame quarterback walk because we can't get him anybody but Sammy freaking Watkins to (laughs) to be there for him. And and two players that are rookies. And then we're going to complain and complain that he's not at OTAs when these guys don't even know the playbook yet. So honestly, I was expecting a third round pick. I don't know why all of a sudden we decide that, you know, hey, the front office decides we don't want Aaron Rodgers anymore, and now we get to be picky on what we want from him. It's not fair to Jordan Love. It's not fair to Green Bay Packers fans. And honestly, I'm not convinced he's going to be traded at all at this point. Mm. Oh, interesting. so interesting. Okay. Well, I want to I want to I want to backpedal. I'm, I want to I want to add to that uh, another question, follow up with that. When you say you don't think he's going to get traded, like, do you think that he just might just retire or ride the bench if he doesn't get traded? Or what can you see happening? He's not coming to Green Bay and riding the bench because people will burn Lambo Field to the ground. So I that's not that. happening. Now, if the Jets are smart, we just heard huge news coming out of the owners meeting. Right. And that is that Lamar Jackson wants to be traded. And right. the Jets are reportedly on the top of his list. Now, we also heard rumors that Matthew Stafford is on the trade block. And the Jets may be talking with Matthew Stafford. So right now with those two big news, the Packers have no leverage except for the fact that Woody Johnson wants Aaron Rodgers. Now, if Aaron Rodgers goes to the New York Jets, you guys are primed to win a Super Bowl. Most likely going to happen. You guys have a great roster. The only reason you weren't winning last year was because of Zach Wilson. 
Yeah, let's let's be honest. Zach Wilson cost yeah. you guys a lot of game, and him <laughs> sitting behind Rodgers is also the best thing to happen for the Jets because that kid's just got to grow up, and I think he'll be a good quarterback. But it's hard to be a young kid and go into New York. I went as a young kid to New York, and I got lost. I can't imagine being a quarterback for the New York Jets <laughs> and being in New York City. <laughs> so, but if I'm the Jets right now, I'm calling the Baltimore Ravens about Lamar Jackson, and I'm telling the Packers about it every step of the way. So at this point, the Packers could end up walking away with a third round pick. And the interesting thing about, you know, the whole Lamar Jackson situation, because, you know, obviously whenever you hear Lamar Jackson, he requests a trade, you're thinking, oh, the New York Jets had themselves a backup option with Jackson and they could use it as leverage. But instead, our general manager goes out, he publicly states that, hey, yeah, yeah, we're not interested in Lamar. We're too dug into this Aaron Rodgers situation, and they don't want to be unfair. They don't want another Derek Carr situation to potentially happen, you know, to where he, you know, the Jets and him were close, but we wanted Rodgers, and, you know, it all kind of fell apart. Um, And obviously, I would much rather have Aaron Rodgers than Derek Carr, and it seems like it's going to happen, so everything kind of worked out in the end. Um, But the Jets don't want to, you know, get into all these conversations with Baltimore about what a trade could work out and what it could end up looking like whenever we're already committed to Aaron Rodgers when we've had free agents sign with the New York Jets, coaches getting hired by the New York Jets because we're getting Aaron Rodgers. Um, so this whole thing happening. So it's definitely been interesting um, to say the least. Um, but whatever, you know, you, you know, you say this trade may not happen. Um, but realistically speaking, if you do think the trade you know, will eventually go through. When do you think like a timeline for it could be done? When do you think it actually gets completed? The Jets, Packers, social media accounts tweet out, this trade is now official. And then that's whenever it marks it being official. So what do you think? I mean, first and foremost, to go off of one thing you, you said here, if the Jets front office is not talking to the Baltimore Ravens front office about Lamar Jackson right now, then they're just as dumb as the Packers front office. Like you, you have an option to get leverage. You have a backup choice. Lamar Jackson's a lot younger. Do I think Lamar Jackson is Aaron Rodgers? No. Do I think he'll have as long as of a career as Aaron Rodgers or, or will be as great for the jets as Aaron Rodgers could be? No, I don't, but that's leverage. And you need right. to have a backup plan. You mentioned you lost Derek Carr. You lost Derek Carr because you're dragging your feet. And this whole Rodgers thing is, is taking forever. But as for a timeline, this will either happen draft night at this point, or this will go past June 1st. For the Packers, June after June 1st is best because then we gain $20 million in cap back by making him a post-June 1st trade. So right. if you're Goody, that works out best for you. But at this point, you need to get out of this. And I think that the Jets will cave on draft night and give the Packers the 13th overall pick uh, for Aaron Rodgers. Interesting. Mm, okay. What if you... If you're the Packers and you want to support Jordan Love or maybe go maybe a defense um, type of trade, what would you get? I, I I know the picks are there. You know you're going to get some picks back. What players would you get off the Jets, either offense or def defensive side of the ball? I I don't even know what players we could bring in at this point. I mean the Jets can't really give up much, right? Because you're trying to build a Super Bowl team around Aaron Rodgers. And you guys have a stacked roster, which is why Aaron Rodgers wants to go there. So if you're the Jets, you really can't give up any big name players. You're not going to give up Zach Wilson because you still want him to be your heir apparent. So when it comes to players, I don't really think there's a conversation that can be had. So Corey Davis, you want to take Mims? Corey Davis or Mims? Maybe Denzel Denzel Mims? Mims? Listen, I take him. I, I would take whatever okay. you got. But if I'm talking from a business perspective and I'm playing GM of the New York Jets here, those are the type of players that make New York so attractive for Aaron Rodgers. Those are the type of players that I'm excited to have on this roster because Green Bay just screwed me over, right, if I'm Aaron Rodgers last year. They got rid of everything. They went out there to make me look like an idiot after two back-to-back -back MVPs because they didn't want me to win back-to-back -back MVPs. And so they did everything they could last year to screw me over. And I don't want to go to New York in that same situation. I want all the players you have there. And that's why I don't think any players can be in that conversation. And I think that's why the Jets are so steadfast in making sure that's a point. And 
that definitely does make a lot of sense what you say right there. You know, especially with, you know, the whole Aaron Rodgers wanting to come. Because, I mean, you know, obviously, he's, this is towards the end of his career. He's wanting to go on a team where he can win a Super Bowl, win another one, maybe even another MVP, have as much success as possible. Um, But I do feel like... Corey Davis is an expendable piece on the New York Jets roster simply because of the moves we've made this offseason, signing Could Alan be. Lazard, signing McCole Hardman, having interest in Odell Beckham Jr. Because if, you know, we do – because, of course, right now, Corey Davis' spot on the Jets is just simply as that three guy. But if you bring in Odell Beckham Jr., that's where things get confusing, and that's when Corey Davis becomes this extendable piece. And we know the Packers need some wide receiver help with Matt LaFleur even mentioning it, you know, in his press conference yesterday saying, I mean, look, we need to add some guys. And I took a look at that Packers death chart at receiver. And, you know, you, yeah. you have some promising pieces with Watson and Dobbs. but Right, right. Oh, you he's know, like, no. He says, no. I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> Watson, I think, could be an all-star uh, for this team for, for a long time to come. Dobbs is, is, a, is a nice little speed guy, but I think he's more of the, uh, the Marquez Valdez Scantling book than, okay. than anything else we've ever had on this roster. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there any guys that – you would look to get in the draft for the Packers if you if you were them it, getting some of these picks from the Jets, just like Tigo is saying. You know, I think his first comment was it would be good if we waited. I th- I think that's I I agree with him. And his second comment seem more likely will will fall. That's what I think the Jets will do. I think the Jets will. I think coming that night, there's going to be a lot of negotiations. There's going to be maybe even the, even the second day, there's going to be negotiations. But if we give you those picks, who would you get at wide receiver if you had the chance? I don't know where we go wide receiver. Let's be honest. We have a okay. general manager that's okay. drafted decent in the first round, which is not something the Packers have had for a long time, right? Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. But he likes to draft defense in the first round. Now, there's two tight ends out there, one from Utah, one from Notre Dame, who I think would be great picks Facts. for the Green Bay Packers because we haven't had a tight end like that since Jermichael Finley, who we drafted in the in the second round out of Texas. And yeah. anytime the Packers have had a good tight end, we've, we've had a good team. We won Super Bowls with great tight ends. Mm-hmm. And but if you look at the yeah. track record of, of Gutekunst past the first round, I, yeah. I mean, we, we don't have any players – left from his previous drafts except for last year you look even past the fifth round last year two out of four of those picks are no longer on our roster so yeah to me i mean obviously i am not a fan of our general manager because he hasn't (laughs) loaded our team so i have no faith in whatever picks we get that this is going to work out honestly i'm waiting for this to all fall apart and then i'm excited for the new gm to come in Hmm. okay all right. What, um, what are you thinking, Jude? What are you thinking? You know, I mean, I'm definitely thinking, you know, with this whole draft pick thing, maybe, you know, just give Aaron Rodgers to us for free. You know, we can end this whole debate, you know, with all this. But, you know, obviously, that's, that's not going to happen. Here. It's not going to happen. Um, but yeah, it's not going to happen. Everybody in Green Bay and in Wisconsin thought that was going to happen. So we're, <laughs> yeah. we're kind of sitting here surprised that that didn't happen. <laughs> I mean, you need to make the owners happy, right? You know, you want to keep the team in Green Bay, so might as well do that, right? We gave Devontae Adams away for a second round pick. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Listen, I have oh a piece God, of paper right. that says I own the Green Bay Packers, but trust me, they don't listen to me at all and don't give a shit what I have to think. They're gonna do whatever they want. <laughs> yeah, it's in your backdrop. It's it's uh, there's the pendant owner it says owner right there. I am an owner. I am an owner of the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> But all it gets me is is a ticket where they let me to buy merchandise. <laughs> That's it. Oh my gosh. Okay, so my next question for you is with Aaron Rodgers maybe coming to the Jets, what what players would you have him follow him from the Packers? I know we've been rumor with Cobb, Mercedes Lewis. I don't want Lewis or Cobb, but I understand why. We already have Lazar. We already have Hackett. Who would be another guy? Well, that's an interesting thing because I I would say those two are impeccable pieces, especially when it comes to locker room guys. I get Cobb. He's slowed down. He is yeah. he is not. I mean, the problem is the Packers use Cobb as essentially our number one receiver for a lot of the season, and he's not going to hold up that long. But as a number three slot receiver that you play half the game, I think he's great. Mercedes Lewis, why wouldn't you want Mercedes Lewis on your team? We have four tight ends. Well, there's that. 
Yeah, <laughs> we have four, like three, three to four really good tight ends. So it, I don't think we need it. Mercedes Lewis has been used wrong in Green Bay for a long time. You have a really? six okay. eight guy who can catch the ball, and we never threw it to him. Anytime we mm-hmm. threw Mercedes Lewis the ball, especially in the red zone, he made outstanding catches and, and should have been a Pro Bowl guy catching 10 touchdown passes a year in the red zone. And we just never used him that way. So mm-hmm. from yeah. my point of view, I think he would be a great addition to any team. And honestly, if you're going all in for Aaron Rodgers, then give him whoever you want. All right. Man. Sub Jets mess, mess, mess. So um. Man, okay, okay, that's that's really interesting. I like I like hearing that side of of a Packer Nation on what to build around. I'm gonna go more back to the Packers now because you sound like a very frustrating Packers fan for a long time. You look like you're about fed up, and I understand. I've been a Jets fan my whole life. I understand what that means. See, so I don't want to be a Jets fan, and that's why I'm frustrated because I'm afraid that's the direction <laughs> we're about to go. Well, I don't like the Packers either, so we got one thing going for us, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I would say for you, I know there's been a lot of frustration and tension between Rodgers and LaFleur over the years, and even some people don't even like LaFleur. I just want a better understanding of the lafleur Rodgers situation. What what can you tell me about LaFleur? Yeah, for sure. And when I say, by the way, I don't want to be a Jets fan, I, I mean, I don't want my team to be like the Jets have been the last several years so in that case (laughs) i have been a very spoiled football fan i grew up with brett Favre and went directly to aaron Rodgers. i get it so for me i don't want to have any more uh losing seasons i've I've had one losing season in my entire life as a as a football (laughs) fan and i want to keep it that way well it's like the patriots one winning it's like the patriots so i get it i get it exactly always winning so, right. you know, I think the LaFleur Rogers things was overblown. I don't think LaFleur is very happy. I don't think uh, Gutekunst and LaFleur are on the same page. LaFleur was not invited to the combine in Indianapolis with, with Gutekunst. And, wow. and I think that says a lot. Why would you not want your head coach at the combine looking at talent wow. that you're possibly drafting? So I think that right there says a lot. I think LaFleur, LaFleur said it best. We need to temper expectations on, on Jordan Love. Aaron Rodgers is a once in a generation lifetime player. To me, everything he says sounds like a coach that's not too happy that his organization just got rid of his quarterback. LaFleur and Rodgers figured it out. You know, they they had different ideas. I think LaFleur made really bad coaching decisions. And I think the last four years he's been here, he's cost us playoff games. I think he's cost us the Super Bowl run against the Buccaneers with bad play calling. I think he's cost us Super Bowl runs against the Niners. The other NFC championship we were in. So, yes, I think LaFleur has some issues and okay. he's going to really be tested this year. But to say that Rodgers and LaFleur had had some beef, I don't think that's as accurate as some people would want you to think. OK, hey, good to know. What do you think, Jude? I mean, it's definitely interesting because, you know, with this whole situation going on and with something Matthias, glad, glad to see you back in the chat, man. Um, because, you know, I feel like, you know, as outside fans looking in, we're all kind of thinking, you know, this whole Matt LaFleur, Aaron Rodgers beef, I felt like might have could have been a reason to why he wanted out, you know, and obviously he said it himself, you know, after he got out the darkness retreat, he wanted to retire, but then you saw the Packers have traded him, lit a fire under him, and then Aaron Rodgers said, all right, I want right. to play for the New York Jets. That's kind of what happened in a nutshell. Um, but I just remember, you know, Jeopardy last off season, we see... You know, Aaron Rodgers questioned the kicking call where, you know, yeah. in the game against the Niners, I want to say it was, where they kicked the field goal. That was against the Buccaneers. Against the Buccaneers, my oh, bad. there we go. Um, you really have to look where, at that, though, considering the Packers had three interceptions in a row against Brady, and we went three and out in each one of them. So Rodgers has a lot to take in the blame on that, too. A lot of that was bad play calling on third down. Don't get me wrong. But you cannot get three interceptions in a row when you're down in the fourth quarter and go three and out. Oh, yeah. I mean, that, yeah, you definitely can't do that. And then, you know, go out, pivot to the head coach. Um, but still, nonetheless, I feel like there definitely was some beef between, you know, him and the floor. But to kind of see that all kind of, you know, not really being as big as, you know, the media or kind of as just outside fans looking in thought it was to be definitely as interesting. Um, 
Jeffrey coming in with a comment saying, hey, Jude, we'd love to see you on more. Definitely, Jeffrey, we're looking to do this show. You know, we've done two straight weeks in a row, had had some other things going on, but hopefully, you know, show keep on going on. Um, I kind of want to pivot back more to the Aaron Rodgers trade um, real quick um, about leverage. This is, you know, definitely been a hot topic going on throughout, you know, Packers fans, Jets fans saying Packers fans going, oh, we have all the leverage because the Jets don't have any backup playing with Aaron Rodgers. And then Jets fans saying, you know, kind of what Tigo was saying in this comment right here, you know, why would you give up or why would we give up on picks in 2023 if we can give up 2024 assets, basically implying our picks this year are probably going to be better than the picks that we were going to have next year. Um, So as a Packers fan looking in, who do you think has the leverage in this Aaron Rodgers trade? Depends how long this goes. And it depends on, on Woody Johnson. Let's be honest, because if the owner decides he wants Aaron Rodgers, then all the leverage is on Green Bay's side. Because if he's putting the line in the sand, then they're going to get Aaron Rodgers. Now, as a Packers fan, I don't want their picks from 2024. I don't want your guys' picks for 2024. I think you guys <laughs> are going to be deep in the playoffs, if not in a Super Bowl run. I want the picks right. this year. So I completely understand why the Packers are holding out saying, hey, we want the number 13 overall pick this year. Now, I also understand where the Jets are coming from because you don't know if Aaron Rodgers is going to play next year. But at the same time, look what the Rams just did. If you win a Super Bowl, who else cares what happens? That's all that right. matters is winning a Super Bowl. So from a Jets fan perspective, I look at it as, why wouldn't I give up those picks now? I'm chasing a Super Bowl. Nothing else matters. Oh, yeah. I mean, completely agree. I've said, you know, in the past before, if we give up a first round pick, you know, obviously it's kind of like, oh, man, we give up 13. You know, it's been one of the sweet spots of picks throughout the past two years. You give up it's 13 like, to get 12. Exactly. It's like you get Aaron Rodgers in return. He's a top five quarterback of all time. You know, if you, you have a big chance, like a really great chance to win a Super Bowl, I mean, sure, you might have gave up on 13 and it's Broderick Jones, who sure might be an all pro tackle one day in the NFL. But you also <laughs> want a Super Bowl, something the Jets haven't done since 1969. So I oh, definitely nice. feel like, yeah, it, it weighs out a whole lot. Um, Matthias in the comments actually has a question for you. Kyle, he says, was Roger ever was Rogers ever okay with any of this after McCarthy left and then with the drafting love? Um, that was the beginning of the end. The issue is, is nobody that drafted Aaron Rodgers is in that building anymore. Nobody. Yeah. Right. All right. gone. Right. So he has nobody on his side. It's the same thing Favre went through when he left, which is why he wanted to leave. The McCarthy thing had run its course. McCarthy had been in the building for a long time and had gotten really stale on his coaching. I was actually really excited to see McCarthy in the playoffs last year because he finally had that look back in his eyes like a, like a head coach again. I think the biggest issue was is how much bad luck could one team have when it came to McCarthy and Rodgers in the playoffs before it finally started to get with you. I mean, the 2014 uh, NFC Championship where, where we lost to Seattle who had a 5% chance uh, winning of coming back. I mean, that really hurt. And then to go, you know, 15 and one and then lose in the first round of the playoffs, you know, that messes with you. And I think that really hurt that relationship quite a bit. Cause I think there was some finger pointing and I think Rogers wanted more from the Packers organization than they were willing to give. And McCarthy was a scapegoat. And that's what it came down to. I think that uh, the Packers wanted to move on from Aaron Rodgers, who said this himself on the Pat McAfee show. You know, they wanted to make this move a couple years earlier, but unfortunately for the Packers, our quarterback won uh, two MVPs. And how sad is that to say, unfortunately, our, our right. quarterback won two MVPs. <laughs> so, and, yeah, I mean, I, I think as soon as McCarthy was fired, the drafting of love is an interesting one because I – yeah. It was a panic pick, in my opinion. You know, the Packers wanted Ayuk, who was drafted by San Francisco, the pick before. And I think a young GM panicked and overreached. Love was a third round pick projection for many, many teams. This is not like Aaron Rodgers, who was the number one overall pick until a week before the draft and then fell into our lap at 24. We traded up to draft a guy who was considered a third round pick by half of the league. And so from that point of view, yeah, Rodgers got mad. He got a chip on his shoulder. And good for you for the New York Jets, by the way, if this trade ends up happening anytime soon, because nothing is better than Aaron Rodgers with a chip on his shoulder. Oh, yeah, I agree. We're going to get a different version 
of of Aaron Rodgers, I feel like. And I would want him for two or three years, even regardless of all the stuff that's happened with Green Bay, LaFleur, GM, owners, and Packer Nation and all the players. I think we have a good coach. I think we got good coaches and a good team that whatever happens, I think they'll all band together and be a team instead of, you know, all the stuff that we've been hearing about Green Bay with Rodgers. I do know that a lot of, you know, your fan base is split. Like, they're upset that that he could be traded in leaving, and then there's – I'm not just sick and tired of him, the way he thinks, the way he does things. And is – so you have a talk show with your dad, right? Correct. Yep. What, the, what does he – what does he think about uh, about this too? And are you guys on the same level – with the yeah, whole he and I thing. are both uh, for the very few times he and I are on the same page. This <laughs> time. It happens very rarely, but we're he, here's the issue that my dad has, right? He remembers what it was like being a Packers fan in the 70s and 80s, which is probably what it was like being a Jets fan over the last 20 years, right? Yeah. There's a lot of bad teams, and you were just hoping to get a winning season and sneak into the playoffs. You know, from my perspective, I haven't seen that before. We've it was Super Bowl or bust most of my life, right? right? Except right, for one right. losing season. So, yeah, we're on the same page. And it's like any other fan base. You, you have smart, intelligent fans who understand the game and understand what it takes to win. And then you have fans that want Aaron Rodgers to leave Green Bay. So from that point of view, you know, you, you have dumb fans who don't want Aaron Rodgers around. And those are spoiled, rotten football fans who don't understand what it takes to win. And they're going to watch Aaron Rodgers leave for another team, win a Super Bowl, and we're going to win five games with Jordan Love. Uh, man, I mean, couldn't say it better, better myself. It's like that with the Jets, so I totally get that. Matthias says, "Look, look, this is happening, and no first round pick will be involved. A second round this year, another second next year, and then became a first. That's most likely the deal. I mean, I agree. That's what but- we're hearing." That's what everybody's saying is going to happen, and but right. we'll see. Draft night, it's a different ball game. All of a sudden, all the chips are pushed in. Right. True. And we know it's, Joe Douglas yeah. loves to make draft night trades. I mean, every year he's been a general manager. There's been draft night trades. 2020 is first draft. Denzel Mims, he trades back in the second round with Denzel Mims on the board. Everyone's like, what are you doing? And then next yeah. thing you know, Denzel Mims falls in his lap. And then you have, you know, 2021 trades up to get Elijah Barry Tucker. This past year's draft, he trades up and gets Jermaine Johnson. So Joe Douglas is no stranger to draft night trades. And as a Jets fan, that's kind of what I've been expecting. I really feel like this trade is going to happen. It's going to be on draft night. Aaron Rodgers is going to be the talk of the draft. So I just feel like that's what it's going to be. I mean, that's just the most logical. Which, which Aaron Rodgers won't like being the talk of the draft at all. As right. We all know. <laughs> right. You know, he, I'm sure he yeah. hates this. Now I have a question for you guys as Jets fans, because I definitely have strong feelings on this, but it'd be interesting to hear what you guys have to say. Obviously Aaron Rodgers wears number 12 for green Bay, right? The greatest quarterback in Jets history. One of the most important players in NFL history, famously wore number 12 for the New right. York Jets. That number's retired. That number's right. up on the rafters. Are you guys okay with Aaron Rodgers coming to New York and wearing number 12? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Joe Namath is one of the reasons why I became a Jets fan. I have a lot of respect for him. He's one of my favorite players, and I'm an Alabama fan. So it, I love the history with that as well. And I know that unretired numbers, you know, can come back into play, especially if, if it's another team the Jets have done it maybe right. once. I don't remember if, if that's happened with the Jets. Well, look at the Broncos, 18 still yeah. unretired right now. Exactly, right. So I I could see it happening, but I I would feel horrible if, if Rodgers had that. I know in college he was number eight. Eight's available, so maybe you could. They traded Elijah Moore for a reason, right? Right. So. Right. I think that would be, I think that would be a good number for him. But no, I absolutely am gutted. I I don't want that. What do you I, think, I Jude? That. What do you think? You know, I'm thinking. You know, Joe Namath said he was cool with 
letting go of 12. So if Joe Namath's okay with it, I mean, I'm okay with it. But I do feel like, you know, on retiring 12 after it's been retired for all these years, literally no one but Joe Namath has worn it, would be, you know, a little crazy. But then at the same time, though, it's like Aaron Rodgers is coming in. Aaron Rodgers wants to wear 12. I mean, it just depends, though, because if Aaron Rodgers doesn't want to wear 12, you know, Tom Brady said with Chris Godwin, he was like, hey, man, you know, I'm cool with giving up 12. But if he wants yeah, to come and wear eight, then, I mean, that's that. But honestly, if, whatever he wants to wear, I mean, I'm cool with. I mean, Alex, if it means I am 100% Bowl, with you on this one. If Aaron Rodgers wears number 12 in New York, I will lose so much respect for that man because I don't want to see another person wearing 12 in Green Bay. You mentioned Alabama. We had Bart Starr, right? Alabama mm-hmm. quarterback wore 15. If somebody yeah. came in and wore 15 in Green Bay, the town would be burned to the ground. We don't right. even let people wear number five for Paul Horning, and his number's not even retired. And right. still nobody can wear number five. I, it's crazy because, like, we can't 13. We can't give up 13 because of Maynard. So I could see, you know, I could see Lazard going number five because that's where he was in college as yep. well. Right. And, and and Jeffrey, Jeffrey and Thais bring up a good point. I think Rodgers has – more respect for name it than to wear 12. And then Simon says the same thing. Does Rodgers have respect for Joe to where I, I, I think it is. I think Rodgers has always been that type of respectful guy. He loves the history. He loves the game too much to where I think he, I don't think he goes that route in my opinion. Well, let's be honest. If, if he wouldn't want anybody to wear 12 in green Bay, I agree with that. Nor, nor should he. No, right. he's he's earned that. I know if I was ever a player at that caliber, which I never have been, never will be. But if I was ever at that caliber and somebody asked to wear my number that had been retired, I would say, no, I earned that. That's my honor. You don't get to take that away from me. And I think it's the same thing with Joe Namath. Joe Namath is being very nice. But I don't want to see anybody wear 12 in New York. Mm, I agree. You- hey, we're on the same page then. <laughs> yeah, y'all bring up a lot of great points. And to be honest, I changed my mind a little bit. That, that is kind of, <laughs> you know, I changed my mind a bit. Yeah, that is that is a little messed up, you know, for having it you know, all the way to 70. I mean, of course, name it to say he's cool with, you know, Rogers wearing it, but still, nonetheless, it's like, you know, it's been you retired for New- all these years. And well, no you guys one's in New York it, still so. haven't let anybody wear 80, have you, since Trebet retired? I don't think no, anybody's I don't worn 80 rem- since him. N- no, there's I no one so. I can remember. I, I can't see it. And, and it's out of pure respect. So how can you give up the number of the greatest player in franchise history? I, I right. just don't see how you can do that. Yeah, he can he can wear eight and replace Elijah Moore. He was nowhere near Cabret Sh- uh, Sh- Chal- Oh shoot, I messed up his name completely. Uh, caliber nowhere near Joe Namath caliber. So yeah, he can he can for sure wear. That's eight right. Because I mean it's open. And as you mentioned, we trade what Aaron Rodgers for a reason. What would be really funny? So at at his community college, Aaron Rodgers wore number 10. It would be really funny for him to just make sure he is the best number 10 in the league to wear green as Jordan Love wears number Uh, 10 in Green Bay. Oh, my gosh. I I, I didn't even think about that. That's hilarious. Wow. That would be the greatest moment, I I, I think, in, in football history right there. Oh my gosh! I'm gonna I'm bringing that up. I'm gonna copy that. I'm just gonna let you know that right now, dude. You can I'm steal it. That. Just you know, put a little in very small text. You know, sports talk with that. <laughs> well, we have a question for you. Uh, the chat has a question for you. Uh, Jeffrey said about the Elijah Moore trade. He said, "What do you What do you all think of the Elijah Moore trade? I don't like it because he was one of his favorite Jets." Um, we'll let you uh, talk about that first. Me on this one? Yes, sir. I mean, I've had a lot of favorite Packers go away. And, and yes. as long as it's for the betterment of the team, you know, that's all that matters at, at the end of the day. Elijah Moore has a lot of potential. I was actually shocked by that trade. So I think you guys would Me have too. to answer that more seeing him because he really, towards the end of last season, when he had some competent quarterback play, really right. started to show off as a slot receiver and really show a lot of talent. So, I mean, from you guys watching the Jets way more than I do, I mean, what do you think about the trade? Man, you know what? I think it was because we traded him because he they he didn't take it back his trade request. We needed to give away a pick so we can get Aaron Rodgers in here. Now we got two second round picks. I think one of them is going to go to Green Bay eventually. And I think it was just a locker room a locker room issue with Elijah. 
Um, I know he came back stronger with his mentality, but then we're hearing rumors he might have had a second um, re- trade request in there somewhere between January and March. But I, that's only a rumor. But I, I think it was, I think it was him on his way out eventually. Anyway, that would have been a great piece for you guys too. But um, overall, I, I see why it happened. I see it, it sucks because he is a good player. Yeah. But it, I think the vision that we are going in the future with the New York Jets, it was kind of necessary to kind of do that. Jude, what do you think? Mm, losing Jude a little bit. Can't hear you, Jude. <laughs> it's okay. We always have Wi-Fi issues. so this, That's this, all right. It happens. I've, I've lived in that world before myself. I completely understand. <laughs> I can't hear nothing, Jude. <laughs> nope, nope. <laughs> It'll be interesting. So when I thought when I heard those first round picks while I was waiting for Jude to come back, I, I was shocked. I honestly thought at that moment that both of those second round picks were going to Green Bay for Aaron Rodgers. That's what I thought that trade was. And so it surprises me that both those second round picks aren't being offered right now. I think so, too, because I think this could end up being that. I think it can it, 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 it can end up being two second rounders, either one this year or one next year. But like you said about Devontae Adams, that was a second round pick. And it, 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 and, and that's that's it. Like for Devontae Adams, are you kidding yeah. me? Like yeah, we got a dumb front <laughs> office. It's pretty terrible. <laughs> I just don't understand it. But overall, I like I, I like how uh, Elijah Pitts. That's funny because I think he's the Matthias Simon in the chat. Um, he said something about Elijah Pitts. I'm thinking because I know it, there's a Reggie White, the minister. Everyone loves Re- Reggie White in here. I do. But over uh, 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 overall, though, when it comes to the Packers and Jets, the way this trade package would look like if it happens before the draft happens next week or down the line, what do you think about the trade? Do you think it will be successful for you guys as much it w- it will be for us? What do you think? <laughs> no. I no, no, you don't. Hey, that's <laughs> fair. We're going to do, I don't think we're going to do anything. By the way, I have to get a shout out to whoever put Herb Adderley on the list as well, because yeah. 26 would be a retired number in any other stadium besides Green Bay. So uh, kudos to, to the Herb Adderley comment. One of, but he was my grandfather's all time favorite player. Uh, I heard about Herb Adderley several, several times. Uh, but no, I don't think budget. we're going to do anything. I mean, we 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 don't have a third round pick still on the roster. Second round picks, he's been all right. I, I how can it ever work out better for the Packers trading away a Hall of Fame quarterback? I just mm. don't know how that works. And the Favre situation is different, right? Because Favre yeah. wanted to leave. Favre screwed over the Packers, right? Yeah. Favre screwed over the Packers as much as he allegedly screwed over the people of Mississippi. So <laughs> I mean, you can't really get too upset. At, at that situation. This is a different ball game. This is a guy in Aaron Rodgers who idolizes Bart Starr, who finished his career in Green Bay, wanted to do the same thing, and the Packers just aren't allowing that to happen. Rodgers wearing zero would be great. I That would be funny. How funny would that be? I know there's a bunch of players now. There's Samuel wears zero, Parsons, Ridley. Um, I, I'm just like... Such a college numbers to me. I go with Deion Sanders. Deion Sanders at Colorado, just he's not letting his players wear zero. He says, I don't understand why you'd want to be zero because that means you're nothing. And if that's good an answer for Deion Sanders, that's a good answer for me. Yeah, I I don't like the whole zero either. I've never liked it at all either. I I wasn't even liking it when like the first numbers came in that wide receivers can wear five or like all these players can wear five and two and one. I, I've adapted to more two now because I love college football. You're an Ohio State fan. I'm an Alabama fan. Jude's yep. an LSU fan. So I li- I I like that aspect because it's college. You know, you can do what you want, like whatever numbers. Right. But you're the NFL. I'm just not like that. I mean, you know, my I favorite like rule change at the NFL owners meeting this year has to be the fact that kickers can now wear anywhere from 90 to 99. I am very excited to see some 99 kickers out there. How hilarious would that be? <laughs> it's That's college so rules, funny. man. That's what they were right. in college. Right. I love I that would be funny. I like the double zero that Simon said. <laughs> He's like, so it's gonna wear double zero eventually. Hey, there's and a then, Hall of Fame player center for the Raiders that wore double zero. So it's it, it could happen. 
Yeah, 99 Greg Zerline can be that or your kicker. And then there's one where um, Jeffrey even said that both teams are going to be looking for a quarterback in three years. Hey, who knows? I who hope knows? for Jordan Love's sake. I mean, I want Jordan Love to be obviously the next Hall of Fame quarterback for the Green Bay Packers. And the pressure that's being put on that kid, I feel so bad for him. Uh, and, and so I want him to succeed just for his sake because he everything right. I've seen about him, he seems like a good kid. But I, I think you're absolutely right. I think we're looking for a quarterback very soon. I, I, I agree with you. What do you think? The, but my, my, my last question, and then, then we're going to let you go, brother. Um, what do you what do you have what, if, for your expectations for the backers this year? What's your expectations for um, the Jets this year? And how do you think this all com- comes about your overall feeling? I mean, if this trade goes through, I think this is going to end up with the Packers cleaning house. I, I think we're going to be with looking for a new GM and, and looking for a new head coach if this trade ends up going through. The over-under for the Packers if this trade goes through is five and a half wins. My guess is that they're going to be under that. I could see us having a three-win season. As for the Jets, I don't see – I mean, the AFC is stacked, so you have a lot to go through. But you're going to have an Aaron Rodgers with a chip on his shoulder and arguably the best roster in the NFL at that point. I mean, it's Super Bowl or bust for the New York Jets. I agree. And that's all we want. You'll be a legend forever if you win a Super Bowl here. You will. You, we will probably have a name, a name street after you. We'll probably have a building name after you. We'll be heck we'll of the parade. keys to the city. We'll give the keys to the city. We'll do anything. Hey, but, I remember what it was like when the Cubs won the World Series in 2016, and I hope you guys get yes. to enjoy that. As long as Aaron Rodgers isn't wearing 12, you will see me with the Jets jersey on cheering you guys all the way. <laughs> Here we go. Simon's like, you want you want to trade for Zach Wilson? We'll take a brat horse and a beer. <laughs> that's that's kind of <laughs> what I was thinking. That I, I thought we were going to get like some New York pizza for, for Aaron Rodgers when this is all said and done. So, I mean, I think that sounds like a fair trade. Kyle, you've been great being on the show, man. We got to do more stuff together. Uh, please tell the people, the good people, where they can follow you and see you. Yeah, the, thank you so much for having me on the show. Check us out on YouTube. You can follow us on Sports Talk with Dad. Otherwise, you can also check it out at, at Sports Talk with Dad on Twitter. Awesome, man. I'm Italy Jet. I'm all over the place with Let's Talk Sports and uh, NR Hour, all kinds of Jets and Toronto FC and West Ham content. Me and Jude, me and Jude do a couple shows a week with different stuff. I'm Italy Jet. Jude's up there controlling everything behind the scenes because his mic is messed up. It's totally fine. Jude Jets, Italy Jet, Kyle, you guys have a great day. Go Jets and go Packers. Go Packers. I'm